Hi, I'm Rob Van Rapports. Welcome to NBA Now. Today I have Chris Heffel, who is CFO of Corvest, with me today at CREF 18. Uh, Chris, thanks for being here. Sure, thanks for having me. Can you talk a little bit about uh, investor appetite and what you're seeing out there? Yeah, so we are uh, a lender on uh, SFR loans, so we're doing commercial loans on uh, single-family residential properties. And what I've found is there's enormous appetite from investors for product, anything that's yielding. So if we make a loan, we have investors calling us right away saying, hey, can I buy that loan from you? And we have a much more robust whole loan sale process than I ever would have expected. Our objective usually is to package these loans into securities, and so we're doing CMBS-like offerings. They're SFR-backed bonds, and we've done five deals over the last few years, and all those deals have been oversubscribed. There's, again, such incredible appetite for any kind of yielding product, be it whole loans or bonds, that investors are just really anxious to put their money to work. And uh, our product is relatively new and smaller, but I think there's been such a dearth of products, particularly structured finance product, that there's big appetite. You mentioned single family rental finance, and it's certainly a hot topic right now. Can you talk a little bit about how you see that playing out in the industry? Sure. The single family rental market itself is not new. It's been around for decades. In fact, it's larger than the multifamily market. There are more people living in single family rented houses than there are in apartments. But the uh, advent of institutional capital into that market is, is new. So it started after the financial crisis. You had a lot of opportunistic investors buying houses and converting them into rental properties. After that, uh, institutional debt came into play, first to back the big players like uh, Blackstone's Invitation Homes and, and Colony and Starwood, but then firms like Corvest that are financing more mid-sized players. So our borrowers tend to have from one to several thousand units. And it's the new institutional capital that's really changing the market. Uh, so we're making these loans to people. It's allowing the single family rental investors to consolidate. So we're an investor might have only had one or two homes. Now that there's debt capital, both bridge and permanent capital, he can aggregate a larger portfolio. So mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of consolidation, a lot of large and mid-sized players uh, emerging in the market and having a real influence in, in what the rental market looks like. So how is your company specifically approaching SFR? Well, we uh, have a, a term loan business that's been very large. We also have a bridge loan business where we're financing people who have a fix and flip strategy or they're aggregating. And uh, what we've done with our bridge program is to expand it so we'll do individual assets as well as lines of credit. We're financing renovation costs as well. So uh, that we're, we're broadening the scope because I think the opportunistic buy is not yeah. as much there as it was a few years ago. Right. doesn't mean the market's not uh, still very attractive for investors, but they have to put a little bit more work in. So we're funding renovations uh, now that we weren't doing before. I think one of the biggest differences in the business today, and we're certainly, I think, at the forefront of it, is the entrance of the GSEs. Yeah. You know, Fannie Mae did a deal with uh, Invitation Homes mid-year last year. And then at, in December, we did Freddie Mac's first deal in SFR. They uh, wrapped a securitization we did for about $200 million. And we're now a seller servicer for uh, Freddie Mac in the SFR space, so specifically with SFR. And I think as they roll out more seller servicers, it does a couple things. It legitimizes the SFR business a bit. Um, it's going to bring a lot more players in. Certainly one of the reasons we're here at Kraft is because I think the mortgage bankers are now seeing that this is really a viable business. We're not doing small $100,000 loans. We're doing 10, 20, 30 million dollar loans at, you know, at a time, which is pretty attractive. And there aren't a lot of people playing out there. I think everybody in the market knows someone who owns a rental house or a portfolio of rental sure. houses. And this to me is a really great opportunity for people to build their business. It's a really interesting uh, time, I think, for it. Uh, thanks so much for coming by, talking about it, and your company a little bit. Thank you. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at MBA Mortgage and like Mortgage Bankers Association on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah.